G'day folks, I've literally been off my motorbike for about 30 seconds. Today I'm going motorbike fishing. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now this afternoon I've come for a ride up in the hills on my motorbike for the first time this spring to see if I can catch some trout. The main purpose of this mission is just to show people an easy way to go fishing from a motorbike. I saw a conversation started recently on Facebook asking how do you go fishing on a motorbike, what do you carry, what do you need? So the main purpose of this video is to show people how I do it and then if we're lucky I might be able to catch a fish afterwards. I have got one issue though, I forgot to bring a knife and I need that but I'll go more into that shortly. Let me show you what I've done apart from taking my jacket and gloves and helmet off. Here's my bag, my backpack. In the front of my bag my GoPro was in here, I just took it out to start filming in there, I've, here is my, uh, my little black battery pack. This has got my spare battery and my uh, battery there to charge my GoPro batteries. They're both charged and they've both got green lights. This is all of the fishing gear that I've bought. I've bought three packets of Strike Tiger Soft Plastics, two leeches and one froglet. And I've got a packet of four jig heads in there. It's a very low key trip. This isn't a camping trip, this is just a, a dash up in the hill in the hills for a couple of hours of trout fishing. In here on the top I've got my phone, my Aspa puffer because I'm an asthmatic, the, the handle off my reel and a few cable ties and you'll see why I've got them in a minute. In the back I've got my rod, it's in the, the back compartment of this bag. What I do, the reason I've got the cable ties I cable tie the zippers closed so that that cannot come open which means that that fishing rod cannot come out of there and I take the reel off so that it sits a lot flatter in there the problem I've got is that I forgot to bring a knife to cut that open with so I may need to uh, cut the seam so that I can cut the cable in here I've got a couple of cold beverages which I'll have now before I go fishing and my gumboots and that's about it some cold drink, some fishing gear, camera gear and gumboots. I'll take my gumboots off, I will put my uh, my hiking shoes in my bag with my jacket, then I'm ready to go trout fishing and if I'm not happy where I am and I want to move, well I can ride my motorbike around the bush tracks up here in my gumboots without too many problems and then I can just, uh, all I've got to do is throw my rod in the back. Now I'm going to see, I'm going to stop filming for a minute so that I can see if I can uh, cut this cable tie open with my motorbike key. <laughs> Right now I'm in. Took about one second, I just went yank with the key and it cut through there. So that's why I carry the cable ties with me. When I go home, I'll put a new one on. Now I'll just open this. And in here, all that's in that back component, component is my fishing rod. But see how it's nice and slender? That's why I take the handle off the reel. Just to help it fold down a little bit. Now that I'm here, I'll put the handle back on. And then I'm good to go. Which way does it go? It has to go that way, doesn't it? There we go. Now I'm good to go fishing. I've even got a soft plastic rigged up and ready to go. I've just got to uh, change my shoes, put everything back in my bag and the adventure begins. But there you are folks, that's how I do it. Now that's how I do it for just a few hours, just a quick sh uh, shoot up the bush chase some, you can chase some trout, you can use this sort of technique if you're chasing redfin up at a lake like Lake Hume or something, just a short quick trip. If it was a longer trip, well I've got a bigger bag that I've used in older videos, it sits on the back and I can put all kinds of spare clothes and drinks and everything else in there for a full day trip or for a longer trip, and obviously if I was going on an overnighter I could uh, put lots of stuff there or I can get um, saddle bags on the back here, I can even attach stuff to the front. But this video is all about a quick day trip. Let's get organised, change my gumboots, put everything away and go fishing. There we go, everything's packed back in my bag, I'll put that on my back and go fishing shortly. And there's my rod. Now this campsite here, I can only really access the creek here, it's just way too small and overgrown. I just wanted to come here and get set up, have a couple of casts here. Then I'm going to throw my rod back in my bag, go downstream and try another couple of spots. The problem is it's Sunday afternoon. There's already three lots of people fishing the creek further downstream and there would have been people yesterday so I could find it hard to find a bit of water that hasn't been fished yet and the fish might be a bit flighty. But anyway, let's go and see if we can catch a fish. Right now the creek is looking mint. There's a little flick just in there first. I'm starting off with a Strike Tiger leech, soft plastic in copper berry colour. 
Here comes one. I saw a follow. I can see a crayfish. I can see a crayfish. He's got his head in this log under the water here. I'll go and grab him in a second if I can and I'll show you him. Right now, while I've caught that tree up there, I'll see if I can show you this crayfish because he's really cool. I'm not going to be able to catch him because he's on the move. If he goes backwards, like I think he's gonna. <laughs> I don't want to get water in my gumboots. You might just have to look at him that way. Look at him. Quite a decent sized Murray Cray for this high up in the hills. Pretty cool, hey? Well, all I saw here was one crayfish. It gets a little bit too overgrown for my liking up there, so I'm going to go and find a different part of the creek to fish. Right now, I'm at spot number two. Let's see if there's a bit more water to fish here. Yeah, I'm done. Oh, we hit it, hit it, got him. <laughs> oh, I lost him. I oh, they look like a small rainbow. Oh, that's a great sign. You don't know how happy that makes me to see that fish just then. There you go, folks. Yeah, nearly got me. <laughs> a spiny Murray crayfish. Isn't he a ripper? A healthy population of these up here at the moment, which is really, really good. See you, mate. Put you back where I found you. They are as happy as ten crows. Did you follow? Oh, he's wary. So wary. So wary. I'm going to change to a black leech and see if that helps. I'll change to the black and gold leech. See how that goes. Now, it's Sunday afternoon and the campsite where I've parked my motorbike, there's a lot of tyre marks. So I'm guessing there's been people up here over the weekend and I reckon somebody's probably been fishing through here and that's made these fish very, very jumpy. That's what, oh, I didn't say and that got him. As soon as I said that. <laughs> Very first cast with the change of lure. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little rainbow trout. Look at that. Very fat and healthy. Absolutely beautiful. Well, I'll get you unhooked straight away. Sorry about the, oh, I was gonna say, sorry about the dodgy camera angle, but that's okay, I'll put it back on my head. Settle, 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 settle. Oh. See you later, mate. <laughs> the very first cast with the black and gold nymph, uh, sorry, the black and gold leech, and he hooked up. I took off the copper berry, put on the black and gold, then bang, instant success. Well, there's a fish just rose twice in there. That's a very good sign, because that means there's a feeding fish there. Whether he's feeding on leeches or not, there is anyone's guess, but there's a feeding fish there. It's obviously feeding on something. I love seeing trout rise in streams. Oh, this rose there again. Right in front of me. And again. I haven't had a visual on my fish, but I've seen him rise about five times. He hasn't had a visual on my leech either, I don't think. Because now, got him. Oh! <laughs> He's a jumper. He's a jumper. Come on, mate. I know I watched you. I watched you rise about five times. Look at the beautiful colours on that. Absolutely glorious. So if I can get down hot, get straight back in. Yeah. Hey, mate. Off you go. <laughs> How cool is that? I watched him rise four or five times before he hit the lure. Awesome. Oh, little one hit it, and again! Mm -hmm. 
And again, little one hit that three times. It was tiny. Good to see so many really small trout in the creek. Here comes a follow. Oh, he's on it. He's on it. Where did he go? What happened there? He was following it, and then all of a sudden I saw a big swirl over to the right. And what happened there? Certainly came down after it hard, like he wanted it. He's on it again. Got it. Oh, no, you won't hit it now. Got it up to his there. He's, he's tapped on it. They are so shy. Here comes one. Another one. Got it. They're just hitting the tail. Got him. Got him this time. Oh, I still lost him. <laughs> I think they're, because they, I reckon they're being fished this week and they're very shy, I think they're just grabbing the tail of, rather than inhaling the whole lure, I think they're just pecking at the tail because they're a little bit wary about just going the whole chomp. Got him. Yes, beauty. Didn't see that one coming. The last a brownie. Oh no, it's a rainbow. The last two I caught, I uh, saw him come out and hit the lure, but not this one. This one just rocked up. Still small, but that's okay by me because size doesn't matter. I'm happy to be here catching these fish. Beautiful rainbow trout. See you later, mate. You little beauty. <laughs> Oh, was a swipe. Oh, and again. Just an apprehensive swipe of the lure, but didn't even touch it. As he's following it, I can see him there now. He's under it, he's under it, and not, not interested at all. What about this crayfish? Are you interested, mate? <laughs> Oh, crayfish are so cool. Oh, that was a decent fish. That was a much harder whack. Pucker it, and that was a really good strike. That might have been the first decent fish I encountered today, I reckon. I doubt that he'll come back. Got him. He did come back. Biggest one today. No monster, but the biggest one today. This is some of it so much fun. Come here, mate. Come on. The old rainbows get the wiggles up a little bit. The wiggles fish, we should call them. Come on, mate. Come on. He has engulfed my striped tiger leech. Look, the whole leech is down inside his mouth. That's the beauty of a small jig head. They can suck it in easier. Come on, buddy. Come on. <laughs> ah, gone. God, they're slippery. I was going to get the under... There he goes. I was going to get a bit of underwater release footage. I was going to get a little bit of underwater release footage, but he went... <laughs> Comes one, got him. Lift him out of there before he hits that rock. <laughs> a little weeny one now, you'll notice. Well, I got him right at the back of the hole. The one hook him. A lovely little rainbow. They've all been rainbows. Have caught brown trout in this creek in the past, but not for a few years. It's beautiful. See you later, mate. You'll notice that I got him just in the back of the hole here. I didn't go the big hero cast up to the top of the hole. What that means is that that is still untapped water up there. So there's a chance, I'll put my GoPro back on my head, there's a chance that I can catch a second fish in this hole. I've spooked this part of the pool, 
but I haven't spooked the top part of the pool. I might not catch a second fish in here either. There's a pretty high chance that I won't. But there's more chance of catching a second fish by not spooking the top of the hole than what there is by spooking it. I sort of hope I do catch another fish up there now just to prove a point. <laughs> Oh dear, mountain goat country, Ugh. puffed already. I'm puffed already, it's all good, I'm not lost. I'm sure I'll be able to get out there somewhere. I just made it back to my bike. I was just thinking the two worst things about motorbike fishing. One is that when I'm fishing I can't wait to go home because I'm looking forward to the ride home because it's so much fun. And the other problem is I haven't got room in my backpack for a six pack. So I can't stop at the bottle shop on the way home. I've got to go home, get my car and go back out. <laughs> anyway folks, I'm about to pack up and head off. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video half as much as I've enjoyed making it because I've just had such a fantastic afternoon. If you have enjoyed it, why not give the video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that you get a notification each time I upload. And hopefully I'll see you in my next video.